Well, hello and welcome to your weekly wander through the world of electric cars with the team here at electrifying.com. So this week we are talking small electric cars, we're talking the world's most expensive seatbelts and, and it might be time after eight years to say goodbye to one of the electrifying team. Welcome to the Kilowatt Half Hour. Um, I am joined by the fabulous Mike. Hi, Mike. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. And um, joined again by Tom. Hi, Tom, who's back fresh from holiday. Yes, I am refreshed and with a suntan, as you can see. (laughs) No? (laughs) Well, first things first, we have to talk about the fact that we could possibly be saying goodbye to uh, a a love of yours, your beloved Nissan Leaf. What? Why? What's happened? I'm really upset about this. (laughs) <laughs> well, well, uh, after eight years, uh, we've now sort of realised, well, there's two things. First of all, one of my sons is going to college and it's a bit of a trek away. So it means that if we go there and back, it has a limited range. And if you do some other bits and pieces, sometimes you have to charge again during the day. And charging during the day is at the expensive time. And it's it's just thinking that, you know, a little bit more range would be nice. Um, and the second thing is it's just been in for a service and they said it needs this and it needs this and it needs this. And you start to think, oh, okay, is it going to be like this every year? It's not the electric bits, by the way, it's going wrong. It's uh, suspension arms and, and things like that, uh, tyres. So you just think, is it time for a new one? And the missus is very keen on a nice shiny new car too. So I've started to look round at leases and it's really quite interesting at the minute. Because there's some cars that we put reviews of and we go, these are expensive and you think, why would somebody buy this car over another one? And you look at the lease costs and you think, now I understand why. So just looking today, for example, the Aura Funky Cat, which is a car which I think we were generally underwhelmed by, weren't we? It's got a small yeah. boot, the range isn't brilliant and it seems expensive. But on a lease, it's less than 200 quid a month. So it's one of the cheapest Ooh. cars you can get. And you think, oh, actually, that might work. Uh, and some other cars, there's uh, Vauxhall Corsa Electric. Again, cheap. Uh, Citroen EC4, less than 200 quid a month. Yeah. And you start thinking, yeah, well, nuts. that's, you know, especially if you're driving a petrol car and you're having to pay, I don't know, 100, 150 quid a month in petrol, that starts to make a, quite a lot of sense, doesn't it? And the other one, E208, one of the cheapest cars to lease. Now, I think it's the old model, as is the EC4, so they're kind of clearing the stocks of them. But it's quite tempting, I think, 200 quid a month. I I would also assume it's the old model of the Corsa, would it be? I think it must be, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've just got a little outline of it, so I haven't gone into that much detail. But (laughs) it's fascinating, the cheapest cars on it. The Subaru Solterra, it's not 200 quid a month, it's out of my budget, but... They're cheap, 250-ish, 260. So it's like, that's how people buy these cars. Do you you ever do that, where you see a car by the side of the road and you think, well, what made them buy that? Why did they buy that (laughs) rather than something else? Was it a good dealer? Is the dealer at the end of the the road? Is that why they've got it? Is it just convenient? And I think it's because of these lease deals. They just log on. I want a new car. What can I have? Well, that looks right. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It's a tricky so, one, but, isn't it? But it's also it's my this is my favourite part of having this job is someone going, I'm looking at a new car, and then they just give you a list of what they're currently looking at, and I get so excited <laughs> to help people mm, out with picking mm. their next car. It's like the, the best part of doing this job, isn't it? Yeah, but there are How people that. Well, even though I thought the E208 would be a, a nice one, but uh, Lisa, my wife, just said I don't like Peugeots. <laughs> You can't you can't argue with just that. Right? I don't know. Just, that's it. I don't know Blanket. Why. Just a general don't like Peugeots. No, Lisa. <laughs> the the E two hundred eight is a brilliant car. The, the brand new Peugeots I genuinely think are fantastic. The styling of everything, the interior of everything. They're not cars that are designed for Mike's incredibly long legs, but no. they are fantastic cars. And you've just driven the new one, haven't you, Nicola? Yeah. I've just, I've literally just this week got back from Barcelona, where I've spent uh, a couple of days driving the new one in a brand new yellow, which we were having arguments about as to whether it was yellow or green. It's yeah, definitely like yellow. 
Yeah, nice. I, I've Have got a story here. Any? Oh, yeah, go on. Well, Persia have a bit of a history of this, of calling cars which are actually green-yellow. And it's because in many countries, <laughs> green is an unlucky colour. And so okay. people, oh. when they're selecting, will go, oh, well, uh, they'll like cross out the green option when they're buying a car. So Persia have a bit of a history of calling cars which are actually green-yellow. I like a green car. I'm a fan <laughs> of a green car. Yeah. But yeah, it's it definitely I I'm pretty sure it is a yellow, but I did even have an argument with <laughs> a disagreement with Mason, who's like head of PR for Peugeot, who <laughs> stood there and he's going, It does look green. I'm going, I'm telling you it's yellow. I mean it's literally called yellow. He's it's going, I'm telling yellow. you it's green. Yeah. yeah. It it looks like you know the sort of greeny yellow that was released of the um a bath five hundred E. So it was it was that like highlighter uh, that pen. Kind of sort of yeah, yeah, highlighter and penny. Skoda but color, I managed yeah, to drive green. a new one. And... Yeah, but it's yeah. honestly, it's yellow. But um, honestly, it's <laughs> it's a really, really lovely car. It's expensive. It's mm. like top spec, which you're going to want, is about £36,000. Um, but it's it's a cracking little thing. And they're so full of little quirks and the indicators sound really nice. And um, I like the fact that you've got the little party tricks, you know, because it's all about the Peugeot clause. If you use three fingers, it put, takes you back to the home screen and all that sort of stuff. I just think the design of Peugeot, I think, are fantastic. So I think Lisa needs to reconsider her choices <laughs> there and maybe consider the 208 because I think it's great. How did it drive? Was it all right? Efficient? Well, <laughs> I thought it was. I, so yeah okay um i was told it's like one of the most efficient cars of of like that what's the word i'm looking for ilk, of that, that sector of that ilk. Yeah. yes that sector and uh, the numbers i were given were the miles per kilowatt hour you would expect to get 5.31 miles per kilowatt hour so i was like okay. Whoa, i believe that mm, when i see it yeah. And then naturally what I did was when you drive a car in Europe, you get different figures. So you get the miles per, no, miles per 100 kilowatt, some it's kilomiles, kilometers, kil something. Kil kilowatt hours, hours per 100, 100 kilometers, kilometers. 100 kilometers, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so naturally I sent a text to our WhatsApp group and I said, can someone work this out for me? And Mike replied saying, Wow, you have a very heavy right foot because that's only three miles per kilowatt hour. So, but I think that was my doing because I yeah. do tend to, you know, I want to test it. So I put my foot down to see what it was like to go up and down the, the mountainous roads in, in Spain. So, yeah, that was probably my doing. So I think what we need to do is really take it for a proper test in the UK. I don't think we're going to get 5.31, but it will be better than three. That's what Were I you did. towing a caravan? Did you have the handbrake on? <laughs> I was just having fun. <laughs> I do like to have fun, which is also why I got myself a little cheeky speeding ticket from the Corsa launch a couple of months ago. Are we allowed to talk tut, about tut. that? Because I'm just going to talk about it. Tut, tut. Yeah, I think, um, well, I think you, if you show remorse, yes, definitely. Yeah. I didn't mean it. I uh, got an email through and it said I was going 10 kilometers over the speed limit, which is what, six miles over the speed yeah. limit. And it's 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 tricky to tell when you were, because it was driving around Frankfurt and it's tricky to tell. We're going around country roads and you're trying to, I try to look out for the signs, but then also I'm learning to trust the cars more and more that flag up the speed limit on the screen. But then I don't know. I don't know. It was just, it was one of those moments where it was out of my hands. And then I spotted a flash. I was in the car with Manos and I went, oh, I think I've just been flashed. Oh, I can't believe it. And I felt really guilty. And then I kept trying to sort of warn other drivers because it was part of the journalist route that you normally get sent on when you go on a, on a route. So I reckon they probably got quite a lot of journals on that trip. But I had to pay 20 euros. For the pleasure um so i didn't mean it and i apologize but they did capture a really lovely picture of me <laughs> while i was speeding <laughs> so there we go whoops but how if, how efficient is that at the german efficiency it's not a myth is it because you got that speeding ticket within what 10 days of actually doing it in germany or something like two weeks i well, mean i got I, two weeks ago wasn't yeah. it? yeah 
Yeah. I got I I got um done in a hire car um a Fiat five hundred hire car when I went on holiday, and it was it was just over a year before I got the paperwork. And it was a bit had I done it had I got it at the time it would have been twenty euros. It was nearly two hundred euros by the time it got to me because I'd, I'd missed every single deadline. Oof. I didn't even know about it. So yes, <laughs> the, German, the German authorities are a little bit more on the ball than uh, the, perhaps the Italian ones are. So um, yeah, at least it was only twenty euros, I suppose. That's very mm-hmm. true. Yeah, seventeen quid I can I can afford, and I would like to formally apologise for going six miles over the speed limit. I am sorry to the people of Frankfurt. Not clever. Yeah. I've said my piece. <laughs> Mike, what have you been up to? I I have had I've had a really expensive week. You know when you know when everything collides, when you've got um tax, vehicle excise duty, don't be a pedant. Road tax, insurance, MOT, all on the same week for the I three. Um no, not but yeah. Insurance has gone up. It was three hundred quid a year. It's now five hundred quid a year. Even though I shopped around trying to get it down, it ended up being the other. So that was painful enough. MOT wasn't too bad, forty quid, whatever that was. So past that, a couple of advisories, but on tires, but that's fine. Road tax, vehicle excise duty. Do you want to take a stab in the have a have a guess at how much that is on my BMW i three electric car range extender electric car? No, right, it I is. I have absolutely no idea. Five hundred and sixty pounds for the year. What? Why? Well, that you doesn't know, make so sense. At the start of this podcast, you mentioned <laughs> the most expensive seatbelts in the world. Well, I own those. Let me explain a little bit why. When I bought the i three, the the much hated Tesla tax was in force, which meant that every if you bought a new car that was over forty thousand pounds, you basically paid. I think it's a five hundred pound levy every year on your road tax for five years. Now I bought, I didn't pay over 40,000 pounds for this car because at that point the grant was still three and a half grand for an EV. I had a mate who worked at BMW who got me 16% off. So I paid a lot less on the PCP. I didn't realize until the first year. And then after a year, when I got my road tax reminder, I was thinking it's gonna be 20, 30 quid, you know, brilliant. And of course I got this bill for 560 pounds. I queried it and they said, uh, no, the list price of that car with the options you put on it was £40,085. And because I'd put on a couple of extra options, because I was getting these discounts on it, I thought, oh, I might have a few nice things because I'd given myself a budget that I was going to spend a month. I thought, well, I'm, you know, I had a budget in my mind, so I'll, I'll build it up to that. So I ticked the blue seat belts, which I love. Um, I don't think they were like 200 quid or something like that. And that's what pushed it over the 40 grand. And that's what means I've been paying a 500 pound premium. I think next year is the last year I pay the 500 pounds extra. But yeah, so it's basically cost me two and a half grand more to have those seat belts. <laughs> I mean, you know. Oh, no. So, it's, so that plus, so the fi- plus the 500 pounds of um, insurance, This uh, it's hideous. I mean, you know, it's, I'm flat broke now because that's... <laughs> And always in the run up to Christmas, always like November as well, just when you think, oh, I'm going to be broke at Christmas and then you get hit with, by a grand. So, um, yeah, I won't. Make There's got to be a way of figuring that out because I, I remember because I'm always the same, but mine always falls in September. So at least I know that it's not just before Christmas, but mine is all happening in September when all of the insurance, all of that sort of stuff happens yeah. in September. So how can you push yours so it's not so close to Christmas? Well, you can do, I mean, you can do the six month road tax, can't you? But it always feels like that kind of comes and kicks you up the arse again six months down the line. And you think, oh, I wish I'd paid for the year. Yeah. The, and, and, I, and I've never done direct debit for, for, for road tax because you end up paying more um but i think i might i might have to because you know that's a chunk you can't you can't expect to be paying a grand a month you know for one month you know i I know people sensible people like my parents always budget these things they tuck away 23 pounds a week for these kind of things so you know they whenever i moan to anyone about they say oh don't you don't you squirrel away some money no i don't it's always comes as a horrible (laughs) surprise when that brown envelope arrives on their doormat and it's from dvla or dvlc whichever one it is yeah Yeah, it's and it's always horrendous you know so i you know i I mean i'm i'm 52 i should you know i've been buying cars and running cars since i was 17 i should know by now that these things come and bite you but i don't i don't think anyone does Um, if if people are organized then please let us know in the comments you know the main question is has it been worth it for your fabulous seatbelts 
I do, I do love those seatbelts. I don't. Are you, you? You strike me as a kind of person that would like coloured seat. I like that pole star with the gold seatbelts. That looks nice. Yes, um, love those. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. an MG underrated Metro. feature. MG Metro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or even in just in a BMW, getting the getting the blue and red stitching on the seatbelts in a BMW from the M badge is just really nice. I like that. Yeah. 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 So maybe it is worth it in the end. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Can we um, can we take a moment to discuss um, what Tom sent to the WhatsApp group this week that nearly gave all of us uh, a little heart attack? Because you live dangerously, Tom. Explain to everybody. Uh, yes. Well, so I I drove up to the BYD Seal Launch, which was in the Lake District, which is very pretty, but it happens to be quite a long way from my house, and. Uh, I, because I was on holiday, I didn't pay much attention to how far away it was, and then came back, and tapped in the the postcode into uh, Google Maps, and went, ah, okay, right. I need to do some planning on the on the charging then, uh, and I've I've got a Tota BZ4X, and it's like, right, how long is it, the um, the range on that? About two hundred miles. So I worked out that there was a nice new set of chargers at Blythe Services on the A1, uh, twelve. Grid serve chargers and twelve Tesla chargers. Should you want them? Um, and I worked out that was about right for you know a nice little comfort barrier of about fifteen percent. But of course, you know it's cold <laughs> and uh, windows are misting up. So I arrived there on the way up with about five percent. Which uh, you, you do this thing where you're like, um, oh, it's all right, you know, it's getting a bit low. But then once you know, and this is the difference now that you know, if you've got twelve charges, you're going to be able to get in there, and then you and they're going to work. So that's yeah. the once you know that, I think you have some confidence of going a little bit lower in the range. Uh, so that was fine. And then on the way back, I was like, right, well, how much am I going to have on the way back? And I thought, well, I, I kind of know I'm going to make it. So I played a little fast and loose and got there with 2%, at which stage the TOTA had gone, not just your battery is low, they'd said performance is now restricted. <laughs> no, no but... can I say, can I say, because you, you've been away, Tom, we had this whole conversation with Mike about the fact that he went out in his Ionic 5 and got down to about 20% and the 12-volt battery went because yeah. it, uh, like maybe the battery was just too low at that point. The fact that you're going down to 2%, I can't, I can't, I can't with <laughs> can't. that. That's not. I, I think <laughs> I had nine, nine miles left. I mean, I feel a bit, yeah, oh. I should have gone faster. I should have had more heat. It's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you just pull in, charge it up. I went, had a sandwich, had a wee, uh, and then came out. And you know, not long afterwards, it was a. 85 and I had enough it to go charge quite quick didn't it you must have had but, a bit uh, of squeaky bum time you must have done the, occasionally you do think that, that there is this kind of uh, when you look at the um, when you look at the sat nav and it says I don't know, 120 miles remaining to go and your your uh, uh, the, the range meter says 130 you think well that's fine that's 10 miles but then it starts to get a bit closer you know that it starts raining and you got the wipers on and the, you put the, the fuffer on and then you all right, okay, perhaps I'll just slow down a bit. And it eventually you you just have to play with it a little. I did put the, the heating on eco towards the end. And then as I realised I was gonna make it, I took it off eco and had some heat. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever gone have you ever gone that low, Mike? I've I've never I've I've got down to about three or four percent, but that's when I was that's when I'm getting home. And I, cause I always know if I can just get home, I, I, even if I get, you know, just across the, the threshold of the driveway, that's fine. I can get home on zero. I think where Tom deserves a special kudos is the fact that he's gone that low and relying on a public charger being there and working, which, yeah. you know, that there's no option. There's no plan B with that, is there? Because literally backing it out of the space to go and find another charger. <laughs> I mean, that's the difference between using the first charger on the rank and the and the, the, the 12th, isn't it? You'd probably... You got in one percent. It like get you to the first one, but probably not to the end one. So, you know, I mean, that's. Uh, and then you, you you did it on the way back. You sent it on. You sent the picture on the way back, on the way there with like one percent, and then mm. you did it on the way back. So mm. it's like, I don't know. I get I get under fifty percent and start getting you know anxious at that point. And no, I shouldn't because, and I shouldn't even admit this because we tell people not to get range anxiety, but I do. I'm a born warrior. That's me. I just kind of in a constant state of stress. <laughs> 
about driving. Um, but we need to be, and Tom, but Tommy's different. I mean, whenever we've spoken to Tommy, you know, when we had him on, mm. in, on, uh, on, uh, on photo shoots, when he had that Tesla, I remember him, I was saying to him, where, where, how you, how, you know, where are you with, with charge? He said, I don't know, got like 14% left. And I said, well, that's not going to get you home, is it? And I was, I was getting stressed. I was on like 77% thinking, is that enough to get home? I'm not sure it is. You know, yeah. Tommy was like, he's kind of horizontal <laughs> with these things, isn't he? And he just said, that's fine. I just find yeah. somewhere. I just find somewhere, plug it in. There's a, you know, BP down the road, it says on the app. So I mean, BPP, it won't work. It won't be working. And he's like, and, he, and he's never not, he's never run out. He's like, he's so, I, I wish I could be more Tommy when it comes to kind of doing these things. <laughs> Maybe it's a Tom thing. Maybe it is. Maybe yeah, if I change my is. name, change our names, when we won't we won't get stressed out about it. I'm also wondering if it maybe is because Tom, because you're so used to driving a Leaf, which offers, yes. doesn't offer that much mileage, that you're just so used to running on so low all the time that it's not a problem. I know there are some cars that the the, the low battery warning comes on at like 45 miles, and I'm like, well, that's. That's three quarters of a battery charge on our leaf, you know, <laughs> 45 miles. Is, it's like, oh, easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how was the seal launch? Oh, it was, I mean, it's a beautiful place, although it was raining all the time. Um, but I think rain suits that car because it's it's got a lot of grip. And that, that we went around the circuit and things, and it's just astonishing, really, how, how much grip it's got and how fast it'll go around corners if you ask it to. Uh, I, I think it's a really nice car. Um, mm. I, I'd be quite happy having one. I mean, there's a few little niggles, and I think they'll sort them out because the Asian manufacturers always do sort stuff out very, very quickly. Unlike you know the Europeans who are like, oh, we'll sort it out with a facelift. There are engineers who take this criticism to heart. And we'll, we'll fix these things. Um, I just, uh, I, again, maybe it will be on the lease cost, but I'm just, I don't know what would make someone buy one. It, they mm. must really really like the look of it or not want to buy a bmw i4 or a tesla model 3 because the the price and the lease costs i've seen it's more expensive than a model 3 or an i4 and you go mm, that's a, a little bit of a difficult sell for me yeah uh, but it's a, a it's perfectly capable and, and competitive with those cars um but I don't know. I just, it, it, I think having driven one, having thought I really like this, you look at it and I go, well, I'm not sure I'd pay more for it than one of those. It's a difficult thing. You know, you go down the pub, you go to a dinner party, or what are you driving these days? It's a BYD seal. Hmm. Now, hmm. what? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Cause it, it's interesting with that. Also, with that I, think see, I think the more, the more, the more BYD cars you'll see, I think that the better it will get. It was a bit like, you know, when Tesla first came out, it was, well, do you drive a Tesla or what? Whereas, I don't know, uh, but I, I think BYD I think spreads the, its name around. I think the difference there was that the Tesla, when it came out, it was the Model S and it was fast and it had the charging network and it had everything. And it was quite, you know, people really wanted a Tesla. Teenagers mm. think Teslas are cool. BYD's kind of come from the bottom first. Mm. So that the, yeah. the Dolphin is... 25 grand and it's uh, seen as a kind of a budget brand a, a rival for an MG4 Yeah. but now they've got this other car which is meant to be prestige, I don't know just if it had been prestige first and then budget afterwards maybe it would have been a bit different I don't know, what do I know about marketing but um, <laughs> it, it's a clever thing that's like um. So I, when I was out in Monaco last month, there was I was uh, hosting for the Eco Rally, which is like the electric car rally, and one of the cars taking part was a BYD Han, and I'd never mm. seen one before because they don't have them here in the UK. But then I have I've done I've done some looking into it because I was like, this is a really beautiful car, um, and there's rumours that it might be coming into the UK in a couple of years' time with a little revamp or something. Yeah, I think the next the next generation one will because I don't think that platform can be engineered for right hand drive. So I think it will be um, it'll be mm. the next one. But it's a successful car, so there will there will be a new version of it. And whether that's just a kind of heavy facelift or heavy re engineering of the current one, I don't know. But um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think BYD want to bring everything to everywhere, don't they? So mm. you know, the Han and the Tang, which is the sort of SUV version of that as well. So. Along with all the other kind of um, really view. oddly named other little ones like the seagull and the sea lion, which we're supposed to be getting as well. So, um, 
you know, there's, yeah. there's plenty of puns to be written about, you know, be it small BYDs <laughs> in the near future. So on this on this episode at the moment, I mean, we've got five minutes left and normally, well, the plan was to have a lovely catch up and a chat with Ginny because she has been spending the last week over in LA driving every car possible because she's helping with the World Car Awards. And I know she, like, we tried to have a little chat with her this morning, but it turned out the Wi-Fi was pretty bad. <laughs> we just couldn't connect to her whatsoever. Um, but she said she was off to have a look at the new Lucid. So, I mean, I don't know what she's been getting her hands on, but she sounds like she's having an amazing time. Doesn't she, Mike? It does. it does indeed. I mean, I think she'll manage to persuade a few. She, and the idea, I think, going out there is that she's going to get some um, some drives of some early stuff that we might not see for a while. So, yeah, looks good. Yes, yeah, she is out there with Manos. So I think as well, I know that she got her hands on for a little while on the Fisker Ocean. So it'd be really cool um, to get a nice video out of, of her driving that a little bit more. Because I also know that it is coming to the UK very, very soon. If not now, might be now, actually. The Fisker Ocean's in the UK with California yeah. mode, just in time for winter, which <laughs> you trigger it and it opens up all the windows, etc. Yeah, I'll look forward to getting our hands on that. Anything <laughs> else you want to say, Tom? How was your holiday? Oh, it was lovely. Thank you. Yes, very chilled and warm. And it's very different. It's strange that you come back and it's a completely different season. All the leaves have fallen off the trees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it has. Yeah, it is really cool. And I have noticed, actually, the difference in the mileage in the Kia mm. Nero that I'm driving, because that doesn't have a heat pump um, oh. as standard. So I have really noticed the difference, because I've been driving it now for probably about three weeks. And three weeks ago... I'd get in and it was 100%, you know, the battery was 100% and I was getting, I don't know, about 260 something miles was, was what it said, 240 to 260. And then mm. now you get in the car, it says 100%. We're looking at around 200. So you can really see mm. the difference. That's where heat pumps are standard really come in handy with this time of year. But God bless heated steering. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I don't know what I'd do without it. I actually don't know what I'd do without it. It's the the best thing that's ever been added into any car falls. <laughs> heated seats are great. Heated yeah. steering is next level. Yeah, Shield says that as well. <laughs> can I can I can I yeah. enjoy the attention of the post bag, please? While well, we've got a couple of minutes. Oh yes, left. yes, oh, yeah. please do. Yeah. Well, really good segue. Like we planned this. Um, but the your Nero, um, the Laser Hive on uh, YouTube says Gur. You mentioned the Nero EV a couple of times, but said nothing about it. Yeah. Whoever the laser hive is, is quite angry about this. Um, he, says, uh, he or she has said, I've just ordered one of my next motability car, and now I'm wondering if it's too boring for words or has bongs that drive you crazy. So what would you say to that in a nutshell? No, it doesn't, it doesn't bong as, as much as you would expect it to bong. It's not as bongy, uh, like to cause an annoyance. Because actually I did a video last week with Nikki because Nikki's back, yay! Uh, so I did a video last week with Nikki comparing the Nero to the Hyundai Kona, and actually the Kona is way more bongy than the Nero. Yeah. But um, yeah. in terms of like the quality, it's it's not boring or anything. It's a lovely it's a lovely looking car. It is. It's a slightly more. Oh God, I don't want to use boring. <laughs> but it is slightly more of a boring exterior. Conventional. To- Conventional. conventional. There yeah. we go. Orthodox. Yeah. It's well, you, a more you look... conventional exterior, but it's lovely. Well, you've, you will have made Wendy Hopkins happy as well because she wrote she wrote in. That sounds like a kids' TV program. No? She mentioned on the YouTube <laughs> channel that um, she wants. She, Wendy Hopkins says, "I so want to hear your review on the EV Nero Nicola. I've had mine since September and I love it." So Wendy loves. Uh, so it sounds like you, you were a fan as well. Um, I'll we'll go through a couple of other ones. Um, Neil Williams says, long-term reviews are always useful. I agree with you. He says, um, it does make me wonder if uh, how I'd review the soul after 22 months and 12,000 miles, he says. Perhaps I'll write it up for fun and it can sit on my computer where no one ever see it. No, Neil, write it and send it to us. Send it. Yes. We want to read it. When we're really thinking about doing long-term updates from owners, people who've got it, because you know it's valuable information. So, Neil, send it to us, um, info at electrifying.com, um, and uh, we'll get back to you. We'll tell you if it, you know we, we can use it or not. But um, yeah, so really good that. A um, couple of other ones. Um, oh, 
this is just taking it random. It says, um, too funny. Uh, thank you for your morning cheer. Also, what's up with the retro 720p? Well, I think because the reason it's 720p is because we film on um, webcams and there's no point spending any extra time having high definition stuff. But we might, if we, if, if. I if, thought that was a the, car I hadn't heard of. <laughs> it's a <laughs> McLaren. Yeah. The, the, I was um, thinking, what's the retro, what's the retro, what's the retro 720p? Who's made that? Is it well, BYD? Yeah, yeah. Is it? it's, it's an old NSU <laughs> or something, Tom. Um, and yeah. finally, this, this is a bit of validation. I never get, I never get sentences like this. Um, Andrew Roberts says, uh, Mike is right about the VW. It's got his act together on ID software. I have a 24 model year ID three with version 3.5 and it performs flawlessly without any lag. Thank you. Yes, I I drove it in the ID7. I thought it was fine. I think it's time we stopped giving it a hard time because it's a lot better than it was. So, and that concludes you the post. You only read that one article. Mark. Yes, it's true. Yeah, <laughs> well, I take I take it wherever I can get. Doesn't the ID7? <laughs> doesn't the ID7 have the new, completely new system? It does. It does. It has the one that's going Whereas to come to ID3, ID3. So it's the big screen. Yeah. 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 It's a loads better. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. That's fine, but that's well, it. That that fabulous. that concludes post bag, and it concludes that we're over time. And look, already. if you want to, yeah, if you want to add to the post bag for comments Please. for next week, then pop it in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Electrifying YouTube channel. And if you are listening uh, on wherever you normally listen to your podcast, and you're not actually watching us, if you could leave us a little cheeky five star review and just say how much you love it, then the algorithm works really nicely in our favour. Because it's, you Does. know, that's just us being honest. You know? <laughs> Honesty mm -hmm. is key. But there we go. We've That's the kilowatt half hour. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Mike. And thank you, Tom. And we'll see you next week. Bye.